So we heard the two solutions from uh, uh, Henry and, and Pete. So one, the, the switch schedule solution, and the other one, the endpoints uh, points, uh, solution, all the capabilities and the features and how it scales and so on. What I want to talk next is how do you enable the ecosystem? Now that you have the silicon, the hardware, how do you enable the ecosystem, right? How is Broadcom trying to enable the ecosystem? So at the silicon level, we have the Tomahawk 5s and the Jericho, Jericho 3 AIs. So we have you know, lots of cu uh, customers, ODM partners, OEM partners building systems out of it. Now, important piece of this is the network operating system. So we have various options in how we enable our customers. So for instance, uh, somebody like an OEM, you know, they can port their own network operating system. Like for instance, Arista, they have their own operating system that they can port on top of our SDK. Uh, another option is uh, somebody like DriveNuts, for instance. They, you know, they have the disaggregated operating system that, you know, they can port that operating system on top of uh, uh, an ODM hardware. Or you can have something like uh, Sonic, which is an open source. Uh, operating system that we support and we contribute into the, uh, you know, into the open source. And um, so in all of these operating systems, they can leverage all the capabilities that we have in the silicon, like the end-to-end -end congestion management, uh, load balancing, multi-tenancy, uh, you know, uh, failure detection, recovery, telemetry, and so on. And Supporting this ecosystem, you have a bunch of partners, orchestration partners like Abstra, Beyond Edge, or, uh, and so on. So we have the complete ecosystem enabled by the silicon here. Now, the, the key point here is that with this ecosystem, you, know, you don't have you know, customer lock-in and the customers have flexibility in, in, in according to their individual needs. <clears throat> so this is in contrast to you know, somebody coming up and saying, okay, he's completely vertically integrated solution. Um, now, frequently what happens is, you know, our customers come and ask us, hey, you know, we have invested in Ethernet. We want to use Ethernet. But, you know, the question that came up earlier was, and how does it compare to something like InfiniBand? So here are a couple of examples that, our customers ran. These are not the test benchmarks that we ran internally, but these were done at their, uh, you know, at the hyperscalers. So here's an example that shows, for instance, um, you know, how, um, how uh, a benchmark, like for instance here, this is a nickel all-to-all -all benchmark comparing the Jericho 3 or the Jericho 2 fabric with that of InfiniBand. So you can see here, for the message sizes here that is shown that um, the schedule fabric performs 10% better than InfiniBand. Now, this is a big deal, right? 10% better because if you look at the entire cost of the uh, uh, cluster, right? A significant portion is the accelerators or the GPUs. Next is the optics cost. So if you can increase the performance of your network by 10%, you can reduce the number of GPUs and you can reduce the number of optics as well. So in, in some sense, by increasing the performance, you're paying, you're paying for the network itself. So it kind of comes out, comes out free. So this is with a, a, a schedule fabric uh, done at a hyperscaler. We also, an, another customer also did um, comparison to InfiniBand with Ethernet fabric. This is the endpoint that, that we talked about. Here also you can see that the, the performance is comparable to that of uh, InfiniBand. So the, the net, uh, the, the point here is that, you know, there is a lot of investment ecosystem, et cetera, around Ethernet. And if, if Ethernet performs uh, close to or better than InfiniBand, then customers would like to prefer that. Now, why is that the case? So why, why do we believe that um, you know, this is the case. So, so for instance, right, uh, one of the things, but by the way, all the performance that was done was like, like, so it was like, you know, 25 point terabits, the same, same bandwidth and radix and so on, right? So, but in addition to that, uh, what we see is if you compare with InfiniBand, 
Uh, InfiniBand used to be ahead in terms of fabric bandwidth and the port speed, but Ethernet in the last uh, several years have, you know, significantly ahead of InfiniBand. So for instance, um, on the port speed, today with the Ethernet we have 800 gig port speed, whereas InfiniBand is at 400 gig port speed. Pretty soon we'll have a 1.60 terabit device. Uh, if you look at the switch bandwidth, we are at 51.2 uh, T, that is twice the uh, bandwidth of uh, an existing InfiniBand switch. Now, when you have this large radix and high bandwidth switch, it allows you for reduction in the cluster size. And therefore, by, uh, by that reduction, right, and on all the other capabilities that we have, like load balancing, end-to-end -end congestion management, and so on, telemetry, and so on, by, redu by reducing the tiers in the network, you're reducing power, you're reducing cost, and that is the benefit that you get with, uh, with this Ethernet. Now, one of the questions that came earlier was, you know, hey, what about standardization of some of these? Are these mechanisms, what you have in your switches, are they proprietary? So Broadcom, along with eight other founding members, have formed what's called as the Ultra Ethernet Consortium. So we are one of the founding, founding members. Now, the goal of this Ultra Ethernet Consortium is to develop or, or you know, specify a high-performance interconnect that is as cost effective as Ethernet and it can scale as big as, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, as a cloud data center. So in, into this ultra Ethernet uh, consortium, so we are driving a lot of features. Uh, you know, the, the focus here is some of the things that we talked about, like packet spraying. Can that be standardized in the ultra Ethernet consortium? So that's one of the things. Now, RDMA or Rocky typically is about in-order delivery. Can we do out-of-order delivery, but in-order message delivery? This is another one that is being considered by the Ultra Ethernet Consortium. Congestion control. You know, uh, Pete talked about congestion control or congestion management is more like a religion, right? So everyone have their own view. So how can you, how can you have a congestion control that can be accepted so that at least you're interoperable between various, uh, you know, various vendors, whether it is a sender-based congestion control or a receiver-based congestion control, those are the mechanisms that are being looked at. Uh, telemetry, how do you, uh, you know, what kind of telemetry mechanisms you need to have within the network to enable either or to assist either a sender-based congestion control or a receiver-based congestion control. Even modifying the RDMA stack, right? RDMA has been uh, a single single path uh, protocol. How do you mo modify it so that you can have multipathing in the network? So that's that's another one that's being talked about. Security. Security is also make, making itself into the backend network. So keeping security in the picture as well. And how do you scale it to a million endpoints? So these are the overarching goals of the USC that you know, and we as Broadcom are driving some of these innovations and working with other founding members. Next, I want to show you a few success stories, you know, about Ethernet. Uh, so here um, I show, uh, for instance, this is uh, from AWS, you know, they, the, it is all Ethernet-based transport. So they developed a protocol called SRD, which is a modified version of uh, Rocky or RDMA, and they built their own reliable data program, uh, datagram protocol, and and as you can see here, right, um, you know they have a massive investment in Ethernet, and the which provides depth and breadth breadth of control over outcomes that they don't want to give it up. So this is the common theme, uh, you know, that we see. Everybody has massive investment in Ethernet. They want to leverage that. And they want to see how they can build, you know, massive AI cluster using Ethernet. Uh, another example is uh, the Oracle cloud infrastructure. They have built a very large uh, supercluster of uh, RDMA networks, um, and uh, you know, and they say that it simply works. So again, an, an Ethernet-based transport here mm -hmm. as well. And finally, one more example here. Um, this is 
this this is the uh, um, the DNX chassis, right? The DNX chassis, which is based on the Jericho two that uh, Henry talked about. Um, this has been deployed in the meta platforms for the Gen AI and recommendation engines. So you can see that you know you have all these customers that are deploying solutions based on standard Ethernet uh, technology. So with that, I would like to leave you with one thing. Um, Ethernet, it's open. Ethernet has a very strong, vibrant ecosystem. Uh, Ethernet is competitive in terms of performance, and Ethernet can scale to a very large uh, cluster size. And, and Ethernet provides all the benefits, you know, the, the investment, the tools, the, uh, the capabilities that are there, which customers come to expect of us.